Okay, well, thanks for that um, introduction. And um, it's, uh, it's also my privilege to be here and uh, celebrate this uh, partnership between Medtronic and Alpha Omega. I've worked with both companies for many years. And I've been lucky enough to uh, work with um, Chagai Bergman. Uh, the algorithm that we're going to hear about today is actually uh, named after him, who uh, couldn't be here today, but he's really the brains behind this uh, algorithm. So we all um, approach the subthalamic nucleus, uh, mainly for the treatment of Parkinson's disease, and many of us will use micro recording. And um, the challenge for uh, a lot of us, especially when uh, setting out, so uh, it might be most directed to uh, guys setting out, is that um, micro recording can be technically challenging, uh, very often would be time consuming and uh, difficult to interpret. You'd need an expert physiologist with you in the operating room, especially if, if you didn't uh, have a background in electrophysiology. And uh, the solution that we were aiming for was to try and uh, develop clinical tools that would be uh, easy to use, hopefully might save some time, would be easy to interpret in real time, uh, and that we could validate and uh, approve uh, and make them um, available for the wider um, community. So um, this is sort of a diagrammatic approach, and uh, we could, um, with uh, the old technology, uh, but with the aid of a physiologist, we would know that we were entering the um, nucleus when the background and the firing would, in would increase, um, and we would know that we had left the, the uh, nucleus when uh, those things disappeared. Um, and when it looks like that, well, you know what, it's not so difficult, but we, would, we wanted something that would be available in, re in real time, that would be a very uh, easily visualized um, uh, graph. And uh, what we did, uh, we, would, we used a construct, uh, which, uh, a mathematical construct of the root mean square, which is really a measure of the entire electrical activity being measured by the tip of the electrode. And if you would then plot on the y-axis the root mean square normalized to the activity prior to the nucleus, and on the x-axis the distance to your target, going from white matter to the subthalamic nucleus, we would see this very dramatic increase in activity. And uh, this would be the classic activity of the subthalamic nucleus. And of course, we went through it and it would decline. We knew we were leaving uh, the nucleus. And uh, what we uh, could then uh, know where we went in, where we went out, and where approximately we want to put our active electrode, which in those days would be around halfway down um, the uh, track of the nucleus, where we'd stimulated, but where we also believed was the motor part of the nucleus. Um, and that is a, sort of an outline of the construct of a 3389 Metronic um, nucleus. And most of the time, we would be finding that it would be uh, this uh, first contact that would be um, the active uh, contact, most often used by our neurology colleagues. But there was much more to the story, and the more of the story is that we knew, not just from the humans, but from the non-human primates way back in the 90s, that a lot of this activity is oscillatory. The pathological activity that you can pick up in the basal ganglia, and specifically within the subthalamic nucleus, oh would be made up of different frequency oscillations. And if you analyze some of those, you could see that they would be present in uh, alpha bands and um, uh, theta bands, alpha bands, and the dominant frequency. And we've heard a lot about that uh, today um, in the beta frequency. Uh, so just uh, to uh, try and uh, show you how we um, tackled, uh, tackled this issue of, of finding where spatially to put these, um, this is uh, the Alpha Omega um, microdrive, one of their models uh, going into place. Um, it's a single cable um, uh, attachment to the um, computer that stands at the side. Uh, I personally, most of the time, will use uh, dual cannulas because we, we record through uh, two microelectrodes. Here you can see it going through the Ben gun, the second electrode going in, and then uh, to pass and connect up. Uh, taking out the mandrains and pass um, two microelectrodes down and hook them up. And this is what the graphic face um, looks like when we record. So we have in the top left-hand corner 
the distance to our target, zero being the target, we tend to start from um, 10 millimeters above that, but actually you can set it to wherever you want. You, if, if you're used to starting uh, uh, further above or below, um, here you can see the one second raw signal of uh, the um, single or multi-unit activity. Here you can see what I'm going to tell you about, which is the Haggai algorithm, which is built now in real time um, as you are recording. And, and you can see that in the, in the, in the top um, um, part of the uh, square, you can see the spectrogram. And at the bottom, you can see what I've already shown you is the RMS uh, activity as a function of your distance as, you pro as we progress down toward our target. And some of these hopefully will also have sound. Um, ah, on the left-hand side, you can also have a graphic of how deep you've gone with your electrodes. So here you can hear uh, what it might sound like in the white matter prior to going into the nucleus. There is some background um, uh, activity. It's impossible to get rid of it entirely. So one of those electrodes has gone in, and, and um, what I need you to notice here is, first of all, as we went in, this signal's red. And the signal of red is because this is picking up the beta activity and the uh, theta activity of two different oscillatory frequencies in the part of the nucleus that we're recording from. Let's go further into the nucleus, and we can see now that actually in both of them, we are within the subthalamic nucleus. We can see this very, very large increase in background, this random um, bursty type firing. Um, and you can see that the red shows you that both of these signals are oscillatory. Um, you can just about begin to see it because we're just in the nucleus here with the increase in the RMS. And you can see a dominant beta frequency coming through here and a um, lower frequency um, at the same time. What it looks like uh, when you, um, um, we, we, we can do all the, all the regular things that we tend to look for, the kinesthetic cells that we'll look for as we're going through the subthalamic nucleus. So, if you can make that louder. Let's, let's try and play that again. So you can actually see it in the, in, in, in the graphic and you can hear it with the amplifier that kinesthetic cells can be measured with this. You can hear the change of frequency up or down as you're going through. And this again is a hallmark of this beta, beta oscillatory area. We can show that, that most of these kinesthetic units are happening within this beta oscillatory area. Um, and now what's happening is we, we're progressing down. We're now four millimeters above our zero. And now we are uh, leaving at around zero in this particular case. We are leaving the nucleus because the background activity um, has um, gone back to its baseline. And uh, what you can see here now is that the RMS in both electrodes has reduced to approximately the baseline. Let's stop that now. And we have a part of that passage through the subthalamic nucleus which shows you um, the beta and the lower um, alpha uh, activity, uh, well, it's actually theta, and actually you can see it in both electrodes. Um, what the algorithm will then do for us is predict, predict for us which is the one we prefer. Um, we don't only rely on that, but because this is based not only on the length of the oscillatory area, it's also based on the length of the total pass within the subthalamic nucleus, and we can choose to stimulate at where the computer will advise us to go, but we have uh, a manual override and we can stimulate actually wherever we want. And this is an offline um, graph of actually um, what the algorithm is showing us. So on the right, you can see the, um, again, the normalized RMS, it suddenly goes up as you go in and it suddenly comes down. You can't see the continuation over here when we, when, when we leave. This is the overlay of the graphic of a 3389 electrode. And then the question was, well, can we do this automatically? And the answer to that is clearly yes, because you can build a program that can tell you 
when this activity goes up, you can build up and you can tell it to sig signal to you when you're in an oscillatory area, when you leave the oscillatory area, and when you leave the nucleus. Um, and uh, this is, of course, uh, the spectrogram. You can see, it, it certainly in this case, a very, very narrow, uh, high beta uh, band uh, of oscillation. So the automatic algorithm is based on a hidden Mark Markov model. Uh, and when you do this, uh, what you can see, and this is a graphic, you go in, it detects it, it leaves the uh, oscillatory area, it detects it, it leaves the subthalamic nucleus, it detects it. And this is something that comes up, as you saw on the screen, in real time. And that's where you're going to prefer to put your electrode because uh, we've been able to show that the active electrode most of the time is in the oscillatory um, area. We validated this. We validated this by showing that uh, what our expert physiologist, uh, um, Chagai Bergman, would tell us is our entry and our exit is the same depth as the micro recording uh, would show us. Um, and this came out with a very, very high correlation. And although this is unpublished work, um, um, I think maybe <laughs> uh, one of the most significant things for all of us was that certainly in our hands, we could show that this uh, was a tremendous time saving. So uh, we went back and historically looked at previous passages through the SDN. We hadn't changed anything else. We just started to use the automatic algorithm. And uh, we would be most of the time completing a pass through the STN in under 11 minutes. Obviously, there is a standard deviation, but it's not a very big one. 